you were looking back at it historically and ex trying to explain to somebody who knew nothing about the movie business about what Don's import was, well, how would you phrase that? Like you, I kind of osmose the fact as a moviegoer that the best cinemas in New York with the most interesting movies were uh, The New Yorker and any C Cinema 5 theater. I found myself, you know, going to those two places. I'm sorry, the Thalia. Okay, so <laughs> when I was just a young moviegoer, to me the most, um, the most must-see movies were at the Cinema 5 theaters and the older stuff, if you wanted to learn something about movies, were at the Thalia. So those two, um, those two sets of theaters were where I went in order to learn everything I could about what was happening then and what was happening now. Um, they were also the more elegant theaters um, and I think that he took some pride in that, or uh, I'm just guessing because that was what you felt when you went in there. Uh, and that you were cutting edge, you were someplace um, that had a wide variety of movies. I, I had no concept of distribution then, I didn't know that some of them were his and some of them were just, you know, uh, big releases, but there was a taste behind it and you knew it. You know, they, they didn't sh show crap. Um, so uh, that was the impression that I had of this man that I'd never met. Um, the other way in which I think he affected the history of film was very definitely because he saw a way to sell things that nobody, it, everyone discounted, you know, that there should have been no audience for. You know, and maybe some, you know, the major studios probably still feel that there's no audience for them. But he kind of started that, you know, sleeper off the wall, uh, you know, the kind of movie you would never think of seeing. He knew how to sell that and to even make uh, a huge hit out of and make a lot of money off of. Um, and some of that had to do with the way he, he promoted it. And some of that had to do with the way he appreciated uh, what these movies were, even if they were bad. Sometimes, you know, he, he would know that a movie was bad. He probably hated all the Warhol movies, you know, that he distributed. But he knew that there was an audience out there that was hungry to feel hip, you know, that they would want to go in there. And if he could get the right poster and the right quote and, you know, um, you know, some money reviews, and they didn't even have to be good reviews, uh, that it had enough elements in it to attract the kind of audience that he had made money on in the past, and um, he, he in, kind of invented those audiences. Um, you know, there were those of us who always went to the foreign movies, you know, which was like the cliche thing that an intellectual, a young intellectual did in those days. We would all go to the Godard movies and stuff like that and rave about them. But Rugoff kind of widened our horizons as far as American movies were concerned. You know, anyone can lay claim to, you know, a, a brilliant French filmmaker's, uh, you know, you know, he, he didn't have to sell those that much because those, they were already legends, those filmmakers. But the beginning American filmmakers, um, he, he went for the stuff that appealed to people who who wanted to see something that they'd never seen before, who were looking for that. Uh, and the fact that it was American was all the better. 